the entrance antiphon for the memorial of St. Joseph the Worker. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. Blessed are you and blessed will you be. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Today we offer the Mass on this optional memorial for St. Joseph the Worker. Uh, we think about those right now that are struggling with their work situation, being out of work or having reduced hours, maybe struggling them with their finances as well. Uh, especially difficult because, as the Church teaches us, we have a great dignity in being able to work, to use our skills, to develop our talents, and to serve one another. And so when we're not able to do that, that affects us deeply because it's part of who we are as human beings, to be able to work and reach out and serve one another and take care of ourselves and our families. St. Joseph, we ask for your intercession today on this celebration, this memorial as we celebrate your example of honest, good, thoughtful, dedicated work. Let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, creator of all things, who laid down for the human race the law of work, Graciously grant that by the example of St. Joseph and under his patronage, we may complete the works you set us to do and attain the rewards you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias? He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, that he may regain his sight. 
But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel, and I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me, Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately things like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized, and when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike, unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us begin today with this reading from the Acts of the Apostles and Saul's conversion. Saul, a, a powerful person, and powerful in his understanding, powerful in his preaching, and yet in this moment in his life, he was going in a direction that wasn't drawing him closer to Jesus. And so the Lord encounters him on the road to Damascus, and Paul has 
this striking experience, this striking encounter with the Lord. And what I'd like us to focus on today is how this particular experience was an experience that you might say brought Saul to his knees and a moment of conversion, changing basically everything that was most important for him in his life. And yet, in this moment, the Lord didn't leave him alone to struggle by himself, but he sent him Ananias to guide him in this conversion process, along with those that were traveling with him, that were leading him by the hand after this experience with the Lord. When Ananias encounters him, uh, Ananias lays hands on him and helps him regain his sight. Regain his sight, which is a way of saying that he is now seeing in a new way. And he's baptized, which allows him to see in a completely new way, encountering the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior, as the core of his life. And it's a passage for us today that can help us maybe as we look at our own lives that in a moment, just like with Saul, in a moment our lives have been changed. So many of us here in our faith community and throughout the world that from one day to the next, finding our lives completely uprooted, turned upside down in work, in worship, in where we can go and where we need to stay. But again, we're not left alone. Perhaps this can be a moment for us to take a look at our lives and ask the Lord to give us new insight and to guide us in a new way into new encounters with him. Uh, the Lord is always generous with us, always able to bring new life in those moments of our lives where it seems like much, if not all, is lost. The other thing that I'd like to point out with this reading today is how Paul experienced this, you might say, individually, one person being touched by the Lord and everything turned upside down for him as he began anew. But for us, we're kind of all going through this together, aren't we? And not only here at St. Alexander Church, but throughout our community here in Cornelius and throughout Portland and Oregon and the United States and the world. We're all in this together. We're all trying to make sense of this time of pandemic and where we might be going ourselves and with our families and our community in the future. And perhaps one way we can look at that too is that when Paul is touched by the Lord, you might say struck by the Lord, he hears this voice, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he says, who are you, sir? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Because Paul was out there persecuting the new faith, the way, the Christian, Christians in the world. It was a way of Jesus speaking to Saul and saying, this is my body, the people, the believers, those that are following me. This is my body. This is who I am, and you're persecuting my body. Well, we are that body of Christ, and we're in this together with the joys and pains of these moments that we're going through. The gospel story that we've been reading now for this last week from the sixth chapter of John speaks to us about being this one body of Christ, receiving the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, which makes us one. And when we do things to hurt someone, we are hurting Jesus. When we do things to help someone, we're helping Jesus. It is part of the sorrow, but part of the beauty and joy of what we're experiencing. We're really being called to recognize our united being in Christ, the body of Christ together in this time of tribulation, but a time also in a number of ways of new life. Therefore, to conclude today, we can think of Paul's conversion and how things were turned upside down for him and yet how the Lord brought new life to him and think about what's going on in our lives, in our families, in our world, and how things certainly are turned upside down, but to keep our eyes open and if we feel like we have scales that are keeping us from seeing the Lord, ask the Lord to lift those scales 
and to allow us to see in a new way, to see the people around us in a new way, to see life in a new way, to see life in the risen Lord. Happy Easter. In this month of May, we ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we present our petitions to our Lord, that all of us may be nourished and transformed by Christ in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that the word of God may, be put, may put an end to violence in the name of religion between nations and peoples. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer that persecuted Christians throughout the world may be protected by God within their homes and churches, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those that are out of work or that are in limited hours of work may receive the blessing of the Lord of new work and more work to sustain themselves and their families on this celebration of St. Joseph the Worker, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those that are sick in our faith community, especially those that will be undergoing surgery this weekend, especially a member of our community that will be uh, in surgery today and for whom this Mass is being offered, for his healing and recovery through this surgery, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our deceased loved ones may feast forever with Christ at his heavenly banquet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray? For the unity of all of our families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of mercy and love, hear and answer these and all our prayers through our risen Lord and Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O 
O God, fount of all mercy, look upon our offerings, which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of St. Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And on the commemoration of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Alexander, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the communion antiphon. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God through his name. Alleluia. Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, 
that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have an announcement for today. Uh, tomorrow, Saturday, May 2nd, from 9 a.m. until noon, we will have a, a drive through here in the parking lot to pick up some liturgical supplies for our families, uh, a little bag of liturgical items for free to take with you home. For all St. Alexander parishioners, I will be here and our staff will be here uh, in front of the church handing out liturgical items. The current missal, or the one that's coming up, the little white books for the Easter season, the palms that we had for Palm Sunday that we have not distributed yet. If you would like holy water, please, please bring a, a bottle of water with you in your car, and I will bless it when you pass by picking up the other items. We ask that you come in your vehicle, no walk-ups for the purpose of maintaining safe distances and having this drive-through. And we ask that you not exit your vehicle, but that you come by in your vehicle picking up these items. Please wear your mask if you have one. Um, please pass this information to any parishioner who may not be watching this Mass or may not have this information through our Facebook site. We'll be here, rain or shine, so please come by. Uh, donations will be accepted if you'd like to make a financial contribution to our parish expenses at the same time as you drive by. We'll have more information on Facebook as far as the route of entering and exiting, but one thing just in brief, we'll be entering, asking you to enter on the 11th Avenue near Centro Cultural, that entrance, and then coming in front of the church building where you will receive a little bag, a packet of liturgical items, and then as you exit, you'll be exiting out onto 10th Avenue or onto Adair. And so we welcome all of our parishioners to come in your cars on Saturday morning, May 2nd, from 9 o'clock until noon, and we'll be in front of the church handing out these items. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, our Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.